have something very exciting to unbox and check out with you. Inside this unassuming box is the analog pocket. The analog pocket. And this is a handheld gaming device that is essentially a tribute to the classic gaming handhelds of yesteryear, like the Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, Sega Game Gear, all those good things. The Analog Pocket will play original cartridges from those systems in a way that is more accurate than typical software emulation. We'll talk about why that is and some of the other really cool features of the analog pocket a little bit later in the video, but the point is it plays old handheld games back from the days when you had physical cartridges, when you didn't have massive updates to download before you could play a game, back when you didn't have to worry about online security or privacy, but these days you definitely do have to think about these things, and that's why I'm happy to introduce this video's sponsor, Surfshark VPN. Surfshark is an award-winning premium VPN service that helps you secure your digital life. And right now, you can get 83% off and three extra months for free using my promo code in the video description. Believe it or not, this is actually the first VPN I've ever used, and I honestly don't know why I didn't do it sooner. Uh, Surfshark was super duper easy to set up. It works on unlimited devices, and my internet speeds actually improved with Surfshark. Seriously. So if you're gaming on it, you have nothing to worry about. Surfshark is also great for unblocking content that you couldn't otherwise access in your country. Just pick any country from their list and voila, you're connected from there. It's really simple. And of course, Surfshark does all the other security things that a good VPN should do, like protecting your privacy, securing your identity, encrypting your data, and preventing companies or threat actors from tracking you online. Not only does Surfshark provide super easy operation and great peace of mind, but with my promo code, it's also incredible value. You can save 83% and get those three extra free months using my link in the video description. And honestly, for a few bucks a month, it's a no-brainer. And I think I'm going to stay signed up. Using Surfshark, I can browse online freely without worrying about being tracked or having my data compromised, just like the good old days. All right, back to the analog pocket. So uh, this is a super cool little device for a bunch of different reasons. Um, and one of them is just its design. It's really beautiful, as you'll see once we get it out of the box here. Um, but maybe uh, the most interesting thing about this device is the way it runs old games. You see, the analog pocket does not use software emulation. Rather, what it does is run old games on FPGA cores. Now, some of you might have heard of FPGAs before, but um, for those who haven't, they're basically programmable hardware processors, which you can configure to be exactly like the original hardware that they are emulating. So rather than that emulation happening all in software, the software, the games, I should say, are running on physical hardware that is programmed to be identical, like the original hardware. <laughs> it seems like a, a strange distinction, maybe, if you're not big into this kind of scene, but the important part is that it allows retro games to run um, much 
much more accurately than most software emulators can can manage. And uh, in the case of the analog pocket, the device is also set up to run with original game cartridges. So you can take your old copy of Pokemon Blue or, you know, uh, Super Mario Land or something, um, or Zelda, and just pop it in and run it. So uh, by default, this thing is set up to run Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance games as well. But with some special adapters, it can also run um, Sega Game Gear, Atari Lynx, and Neo Geo Pocket and Pocket Color games. So that's a pretty wide spectrum of classic gaming handhelds. And um, there's so much other cool stuff too, but you know what, let's, let's open this thing up and talk about it as we go. Because I'm really keen to get into this box. I ordered this thing over a year ago. There's quite a wait list for them, and it finally arrived uh, just last week. So, yeah, it was over a year from order to fulfillment, but uh, worth the wait, I think. These have been out in the wild for a while now. Um, people who got in on the first wave have had them for some time, and uh, the general consensus is that they are really fantastic little pieces of hardware for, uh, you know, retro handheld gaming enthusiasts. So the box itself is very simple. In fact, I love how minimalistic it is. We've just got this beautiful, simple analog logo on the top there. On the bottom, the analog branding, just the, the name. On the front, of course, we've got analog pocket. And other than that, it's just this matte black, kind of a dark gray, really. And then on the back here, we've got a sticker with a bit of information. Inside, we can expect to find the analog pocket in black with a USB-C cable for charging and data transfer. And a little bit of information in the corner here. Analog Enterprises, designed in USA and UK, made in China. But that's it. Other than that, it's this lovely, minimalistic kind of box, which um, I just love that kind of design. And uh, I think it, it speaks to what we will find within. Um, because the design of this, this handheld is also quite minimalistic. So, let's open it up. Classic 
cross style D-pad over here. We have four buttons, four buttons, which allows us to play games from other systems uh, as opposed to having just an A and a B button, for example, like you would on a Game Boy. Um, we have a couple of other, well, three, I guess, a trio of buttons down here. Probably a start and a select and a menu or something along those lines. Um, we have a little FPGA uh, logo imprinted down the bottom left. But really, the handheld is dominated by this massive screen up here. And this is one of the greatest advantages of the analog pocket is its incredible screen. Uh, we'll talk about that in a moment, but let's just lift, lift it out if we can. I don't know the best way to get it out of here. Okay, let's try this.
feels feel like <laughs> like journeys um, but they've done a good job of protecting the back of the device here um, although they've left a slight bit of sticky residue <laughs> only a little bit but I'm sure it'll come off um, so the back of the device yeah the cartridge slot here but then also we have the analog logo and then this gently uh, sort of incised design here, reminiscent of the original Game Boy's back. So that looks great and will help with grip a little bit, I guess. Let's go back to the front and uh, the final peel. Are you guys ready for this? I'm not sure that I am, but here we go. This one should be a bit less sticky, I think. As you can see, you might also be able to tell that it is, um, it basically has a square aspect ratio very close to anyway. Um, and um, as I said earlier, the screen is one of this um, device's greatest assets because it's actually a very high resolution screen. It's a 1600 by 14. So 1600 wide, 1440 pixels high, um, which gives it a ridiculous uh, pixels per inch per pixels per inch measurement of like I think it's like over 600. I think it's like 615 ppi or something like that, which makes it very very sharp, which seems a little odd given that the handhelds that you know this game uh, this console is. Um, while emulating in hardware, um, they had very low res screens. Uh, the Game Boy, as a matter of fact, uh, has a resolution of uh, 160 by 144. So this screen is actually 10 times the resolution of the original Game Boy's screen. But what that gives us is perfect pixel perfect integer scaling for Game Boy and Game Boy Color games. And it also allows a lot of sharpness so that the screen can actually um, emulate the uh, grid and um, um, between pixel spacing and sub pixel arrangement of those classic LCD screens. So it's really intended to as accurately as possible mimic those screens down to their weird quirks and even the stuff that you know um, maybe is undesirable for some other people might be more purists about that and really want to be able to include or you know uh, game with those features so it's designed to be able to get as close to those original screens as possible not just for game boy but game boy color and advance and all the other systems so um i believe a lot of effort was put into the screen and sourcing a screen that could do this in this form factor of course we have the analog pocket branding right down here but other than that it's really quite it's quite minimalistic isn't it and um it feels good in the hand. It has a nice heft to it, but it's not too heavy. I believe it has a 4300 milliamp hour battery, which is good for, um, I think, six to eight hours of, of gameplay, typically. The FPGAs in here are not especially power efficient chips, but that is the trade-off you make um, for the accuracy of the emulation. Um, Let's, let's hear and feel these buttons, shall we? So this will be, I guess, A and B here. They have a very pleasant tactility to them. A nice snappiness and just a bit of rattle. But it's actually quite reminiscent of the original Game Boy or Game Boy Color. feel uh, quite right to me. And then um, these others up here, it's actually maybe hard to see, but the 
these ones, the A and B, are slightly um, convex, whereas these ones back here are slightly concave. So you can feel those with your fingers, which is nice. But these ones back here feel really good too. They all have a very pleasant snappiness to them. Oh, hey, you can see me in the reflection. Hello. <laughs> That's one of the challenges. Anytime you have super shiny screens trying to record, it gets a little, gets a little tricky. But um, the D-pad. Feels really good too. Like I said, pleasantly snappy, nice and tactile. All the buttons feel really nice. And those shoulder buttons, as I was saying earlier. The L and R buttons have that really nice um, softness to them that the GPASP has as well. So um, let's just very quickly put that aside and um, take a quick look at what else is in here. It shouldn't be much. We've got a USB-C cable. Legitimately unsure how this... Oh, there we go. Just a plain matte black USB-C cable. It's uh, USB-C on both ends, which is actually a little bit annoying <laughs> because I'd like to plug this into my PC to charge. I think I have one USB-C port on the back of my motherboard, but oh well. Um, but you could plug it into a, a um, you know, a wall adapter as well, charge it that way. Um, it is analog branded, which is kind of nice. Very simple and straightforward. And then um, a silica gel pack. Always good for nice sounds. <laughs> Your, your TV, your 
HDTV via, uh, via HDMI, I believe, um, and play on there. The dock uh, supports wired controllers and Bluetooth controllers, up to four of them, I believe. Um, and um, I considered getting it, but then I'm like, ah, I doubt I'm ever actually going to play this thing on a big screen. The real draw is is the handheld format and being able to play my original cartridges in the way I used to, um, you know, on a Game Boy-like handheld. So um, there's a few other uh, accessories, uh, those cartridge adapters I mentioned for uh, the Sega Game Gear and the like. Uh, there's like a clear case you can get for this thing and, and some other stuff, but um, this is all we got here. So let's just put that aside. Okay, well, shall we turn it on? Let's see what we've got here. I'm hoping that it, uh, oh, maybe I have to press and hold for power. Or I may also have to, oh, there we go. Welcome to Pocket. Follow the short tutorial, or follow this short tutorial for an intro introduction to Analog Pocket. Yes, let's do that. Okay, yep, yeah, let me press A over here to continue, B to go back, makes sense. For, uh, press Analog for menu, yep. Yeah. start down here, select down here, I presume. Yeah, makes sense. Volume on the side. Press together for mute, that's a nice feature. Of course, the original Game Boy um, and Game Boy Color and Pocket and all of them, I believe they all had a wheel for volume rather than the digital buttons, but the buttons are kind of preferable actually. Hold analog and press volume for brightness. Okay, that's that's handy. Hold analog and press left or right to cycle. Ah, you can cycle the display mode. So remember I was telling you about how the display is designed to emulate all kinds of features and quirks of those original displays, those original old LCDs. Well, you can cycle through those different modes on the fly, which is great, because then you can pick one that you prefer. Quick and press power for sleep and wake, or quick press power. Hold for two seconds for on or off. Ah yes, the classic, the EULA. <laughs> Despite the fact that we are emulating old stuff here, or we cannot escape modern end-user license agreements, it just goes, <laughs> it just goes. Um, but, uh, don't suppose we have much choice here, so yes, we agree. Okay, update analog OS. I see. Well, we can do that online after the fact, but they do give you a QR code here. Okay, so, uh, we've got a few options here. Um, we can play a cartridge. Uh, we don't have a library to access because we don't have an SD card with anything on it here. Not quite sure what memories is. Um, we have tools. Okay, so Nano Loop is actually an uh, audio uh, platform which you can use this as a as a chiptune synthesizer, and it actually will interface with. Uh, all kinds of MIDI devices and things like that, which is super cool. Not really the functionality that I'm personally interested in, but still very, very neat. Um, GB Studio, another really cool feature and something that I am interested in. Um, GB Studio is um, software for Windows, which is a simple drag and drop uh, IDE development environment for Game Boy games. Um, uh, original Game Boy and Game Boy Color, and uh, it is a great little piece of software. I've played around with it a bit, and uh, as a matter of fact, I'm, you know, hoping, wanting, uh, aspiring to uh, develop um, my own uh, game 
using that platform. And so you can um, export from um, GB Studio in a format that the Analog Pocket will natively be able to read and play. So you just pop it onto an SD card, micro SD, and you stick it in here, and then you can play your GB Studio games, which is fantastic for, you know, play testing and that sort of thing. Um, so really looking forward to that. Um, and the develop stuff, I believe there's something where there's another, there's like two FPGAs in here, and one of them can be used to develop other stuff. I don't quite know. Um, but, uh, you know, I think their hope is that developers in the community will develop other cores, I guess, for, um, uh, for the system. I'm not sure if that has happened yet or not, but I will have to look into that. Uh, and of course we don't have the SD card plugged in, uh, or, you know, inserted. Uh, it looks like we've got battery down the bottom right corner here, which is nice. It's at 55%, I will have to charge it up. Then settings, we've got all kinds of stuff here. we got systems, so we can, um, adjust our settings for each of these, which again are the, the ones that are default supported. Um, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, and Game Gear, which I guess still requires the adapter, but let's look at uh, Game Boy Options video. So we can change display mode. Uh, original DMG is the default, love it. Uh, original Game Boy Pocket, if you prefer. Original Game Boy Light, Pinball Neon Matrix, I don't know what that is. Or the Analog GB, which is, I guess, their own display mode, which is probably designed to look a little better. Um, we can change color palettes, turn frame blending on or off. Uh, it is by default on, it looks like. So, sure, why not? <laughs> um, this display on here, I believe, is an IPS display. It should have pretty darn good color rendition. Um, and... Uh, I think that it's got a variable refresh, so, you know, you could get rid of that blur entirely if you want, but um, some people want that, you know, for, for accuracy. Um, audio, just card volume, controls, we can enable Super Game Boy controls if we want. Um, we can force Game Boy or Game Boy Color mode, I suspect it'll play whatever you know, the auto detect probably puts it at whatever the highest, uh, you know, possible is for the cartridge you're playing. So if it does support Game Boy Color, uh, it'll play in color, I would guess. We can reset. We've got these kinds of options for each system, um, which is really cool. And, um, looks like the Game Gear, Game Gear stuff is maybe a little simpler, but um, these are other options for the, the system itself, for the OS. Interesting. Okay. We've got an about page here. And that's pretty much that. So I'm curious to see the different, um, you know, screen um, display modes in action again was analog and left and right once we get into a game but I think for now we should play a cartridge right so I have here let's just put this to sleep for a moment no <laughs> I thought that was supposed to sleep it oh well maybe it will just go to sleep on its own when it's on the menu maybe it's only when it's in gameplay that you need to sleep it um so, for the game, I've got something really fun here. I've got um, a, a complete in-box copy of Super Mario Land 2, Six Golden Coins. This came out back in 1992 and uh, followed on from Super Mario Land, the first, which I, I believe was uh, Mar the first you know, Mario platformer on Game Boy. Um, so I guess this was the, the second, perhaps. Not positive about that, but, um, I picked this up at a thrift store, um, a few years back, actually, and it intended to do a video with it, but just, uh, never had the right time. But now 
now seems like the right time to check it out. So, um, as you can see, it's uh, in fantastic condition. We just got a little bit of, you know, a little bit of um, wear at the corners, but um, no damage to the box, really. No, um, no tears or or crinkles or anything. Um, and uh, we've, of course, got the official Game Boy game back. Nintendo seal of quality down here. It's a tiny little crease right there. But not bad. Um, I think I paid 30 bucks for this, which at thrift stores may be a bit more than I normally like to, but it was in such good shape, I, I couldn't pass it up. Um, to the honest truth is, I have no idea what this goes for online. I suspect probably more than 30 bucks. That's 30 Canadian dollars, for what it's worth. <laughs> um, I got some screenshots on the back, which are honestly really washed out and kind of crappy looking. But, um, Temper Tantrum Tyrant Seas is Mario Land. Wario, how could you? <laughs> um, yeah, it's in great shape for being you know, 31 years old. <laughs> Limited warranty. Do you guys think it's still eligible? Um, so, obviously this is not new in box. It has been, has been opened and played. Uh, I don't think this was the original uh, cartridge case. Um, probably came in, in plastic to start with, uh, but somebody clearly put it in here at some point. But there's the cartridge. Uh, it's in pretty much pristine shape. Presumably that 15 bucks is for 
for the year. Not quite clear on that, but... Oh, send me 24 issues over two years and my free Game Boy Player's Guide for just $30 or 45 Canadian. <laughs> Includes some percent GST. So yeah, it's 15 bucks a year. Dang. That's pretty solid. That's some, that's some value. I would have begged my mom for that back in the day. But I didn't even have a Game Boy at that time. <laughs> I didn't get a Game Boy until I got my Game Boy Color. And that would have been like 1999, probably, or thereabouts. Um, but I did have a subscription to PC Gamer Magazine. I got that eventually. So here is the manual instruction booklet. Slightly dog-eared, just a tad, but really not bad. Aside from that, it's in pretty much perfect shape. Good old Nintendo seal of quality. Wario, you jerk. <laughs> so for what it's worth, I've actually never played Super Mario Land 2. Um, so I don't have like any specific nostalgia for this game, but um, you know, I'm still look really looking forward to it. I, I do have nostalgia for platformers and Mario games of that era, of course. Faces of Mario, <laughs> Super Mario, Fire Mario. Wait, are you telling me that Super Mario specifically refers to Mario when he's mushroomed up? Is it always been that? Have I never? I mean, I guess that makes sense. I just never really thought about it that specifically. I was today years old when I realized that Mario is only Super Mario when he's on mushrooms. Bunny Mario, Invincible Mario, Aqua Mario, Space Mario, Battle Beetles, Skeleton Bees. Gosh, these are not enemies you see in modern Mario games. Not frequently, anyway. Oh, we got the hint section. This was well before the internet was like a normalized thing, so if you wanted hints, you gotta get them from, I guess, the game manual or Nintendo Power or your, you know, your buddy on the playground at recess. 90 day limited warranty. And we have a little map on here as well. Very cool. Love it. Well, that was a fun little unboxing, a little uh, addition to this video. But let's see if the game cart works. I sure hope it does, because I've not tested it. Let's make sure the uh, the analog pocket works, too. The game cartridge looks nice and clean. Look at those contacts. Beautiful. So, we should just be able to pop it in here like so. It doesn't go in very far. It just kind of sits in it like that. It doesn't insert nearly as far as they do on the uh, actual Game Boy hardware, but um, I guess that's to allow for compatibility with other cartridge types. So, let's play cartridge. There it is, Super Mario Land 2, six golden coins. So here you can see, look at the spacing between the pixels. This is what I was talking about. This is exactly what they're trying to emulate here. And um, of course, the, the colors. Okay, we've got a demo going right here. Get in the bubble. <laughs> um, and of course, this is a lot bigger than your um, original Game Boy screen. Um, but it looks fantastic. The pixels look sharp. It looks beautiful, actually. I mean, in a very retro kind of way. Um, but let's let's flip through the different uh, display modes here because I'm really curious. Let's hold down the analog, and okay, so that's I don't know what that is. Oh, demo's over. I guess that.
that's a um, maybe just the analog pocket mode. There's the original. There's Game Boy uh, Pocket, probably. Game Boy Light. Oh, it says right down the bottom. So, original Game Boy. Yeah, analog Game Boy. So this is a nice, clean, pixel-perfect mode with no, no gaps between the pixels. And all of the colors have been mapped to maximize contrast. You know, it's not the green screen style anymore. Um, original DMG in original colors. Original Pocket, original Game Boy Light, Pinball Neon Matrix, not sure what that's about. Pinball Neon Matrix, okay, and then we have to go back here. I mean, the original DMG is just so uh, fitting, right? So, how could you do anything else? Um, but you do have your options, so. Um, I guess I don't have any. Oh. I was gonna say, no volume. Let's turn it down a little bit though. That was a little loud. I might have to fix that in post so it's not so jarring. <laughs> Alright, um, what are we doing here? Uh, A, B, or C. Oh, of course, these are saves on the original cartridge. I had a moment there where I, I forgot that this was an original cartridge, but that's one of the cool things about, you know, playing on original hardware or emulating in hardware, original hardware. Um, why don't we clear one of these saves? I'm so sorry to whoever's cartridge this once was, but um, let's... Oh, that's so funny. It becomes a little bomb. We'll clear slot A. That one doesn't have much progress on it anyway. It looks like uh, save slot B is probably the one that was most played. Uh, there we go. Down the pipe, of course. Okay, let's play slot A. Alright, so we've got our overworld here. And uh, it looks like this is the only place we can go to start with, so let's, let's go. Alright. Oops. Come on. 
Don't know if there's... Ah, you're right. Oh, okay. Didn't want to risk it. Ring the bell. I don't know if that's like a, a little checkpoint. Can't remember. Um... for now, friends.